Our next step is to generate a solution to this problem. So this problem deals with some water bath held at 65 degrees Celsius and some gel held at a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius or initially at 27 degrees Celsius um, and the gel is immersed in this water and because there's this temperature gradient between the water and the gel heat is being transferred into the tube through conduction. So we're dealing with some type of conduction problem. We're also told in the problem to find a time for heating to take place. Any time we're asked to find a time for something to happen, we cannot assume steady state. So this is a unsteady state problem and we can use our unsteady state flowchart to help us with this problem formulation. Using our unsteady state flowchart, we can determine how many different ways there are of solving this problem. Our first step is to usually calculate alpha t over L squared, or alpha t over R squared, to determine whether or not we should be using a finite geometry or a semi-infinite geometry. However, in this problem, we don't know what t is, so we can't find this value. But we can think about it logically. So in our tube, we're asked to find the time it takes for the temperature at the coldest point, which is at the center of the tube, to increase or to warm up. And because the temperature at the center of the tube is changing, we can't assume a semi-infinite geometry. Because in semi-infinite geometries, we assume that the temperature furthest away from where the heat transfer is taking place remains the same. So we're dealing with some finite geometry problem and this leaves us two different ways of solving it. We can either use a series solution or a lumped parameter analysis. So now we need to determine which approach to use, either the lumped parameter analysis or the series solution. Um, so the way we do this is by finding the, this biot number. And if the biot number is less than 0.1, we can use our lumped parameter analysis, which is usually much faster and easier than using a Heisler chart. However, because our biot number is greater than 0.1, we cannot use a lumped parameter analysis and we're going to have to use our series solutions to solve this problem. So now we need to determine what geometry we're dealing with. And this is pretty obvious. Because we're dealing with a tube, um, we're going to be using a cylindrical, uh, cylindrical geometry. So now, in order to use the Heisler charts, we need to make sure that our boundary condition is either boundary condition 1 or boundary condition number 3. And because in the problem we're given a heat transfer coefficient um, of the water, we can assume that we have some type of convection at the surface, um, meaning that we are good to go to use our Heisler chart. So before we can use the Heisler chart, we usually calculate um, these three variables here. However, we can't find this alpha t over, L or over r squared in our case, so we don't have to worry about that. But we can find an m and an n, and we can do that for each situation given in the problem, and then we can finally use our Heisler chart to solve the problem.